Once upon a time, I too lived in the world of Protestantism. But in retrospect, it makes no sense. Hi and welcome to the channel. My name is Daniel and in today's video, we're going to dive into why I believe that Protestantism just doesn't make any sense. And if you're Protestant, I'd like to challenge you to consider Catholicism for one very important reason. As I mentioned earlier, I also lived in the world of Protestantism for basically the beginning part of my life. And throughout that time, I didn't really question it. Once I had moved out of it and ended up where I am now, I look back and I really don't understand how anybody who actually searches into these things that we're going to be talking about today could end up continuing in Protestantism. Now, I don't want to make this video as an attack to any one individual or to Protestants themselves, but rather on Protestantism, because as you will see today, there are just some things that don't seem to add up. If we look in scripture, we see one of the most important prayers ever prayed was that of Jesus Christ himself praying over the church, praying that we would be one. If he prayed it, that means that that was his desire, that we would be one body. However, after the 1500s, after the Protestant Revolution, we see that that has not been the case. And in fact, it has become worse and worse as the years go by. And though there are probably many reasons why this is, to me, I see one specific reason that seems to be the root of it all. And that is the desire to be our own God. And if you're a Protestant watching this, you're probably thinking that I'm crazy, that there is no way that you love God. And I'm sure you do. But Protestantism itself is a denial of God's authority. And here is why. Again, as I mentioned, it was Christ's desire, God's desire from the beginning to have one people, that he is our God, we are his people. Yet what Protestantism does through its teachings is a complete division of that idea by introducing concepts such as sola fide and sola scriptura. Let's tackle firstly and mainly sola scriptura. This Protestant teaching basically suggests that scripture alone is the final and sole authority of a Christian. There's just one problem with that, that although that may seem like the authority in the end of the day and in practice, the authority itself ends up being the individual reading the scripture rather than the scriptures themselves. And we can see this play out in reality, in real time, when we look at the fact that there is a plethora of Christian denominations that claim the same thing, that the scripture is the sole and final authority Yet, they all have different interpretations of what the scriptures are actually demanding from us and teaching us. And of course, some Christians will claim, well, they don't understand the scriptures, or they need to read more, or the Spirit of God is leading us to understand this or that. But in reality, let's be honest with ourselves. The fact of the matter is that everybody takes the scriptures and because there is no overarching authority, it really is the individuals themselves that end up looking into the scriptures and defining what it means. And it doesn't matter how much you want to claim that the spirit of God led you, because if that was the case, why is it that you have the right interpretation and every other Christian denomination doesn't? We see this in a very large scale by looking at all the different denominations, but we can even see it in a smaller level when we looked at the reality of what Christians deal with in a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm talking about church hopping. If you're a Protestant, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Basically, you go to one church and all seems nice. The people are nice. You know, they have great ushers. The music is great. But there's something that the pastor said that really triggered you. And you don't agree with it because it doesn't fit your idea of what the scriptures teach or what Christianity is. So you end up going to another church that you see may be more fitting. You're there for a while. Everything seems great. Now you like this pastor. But then the youth pastor might be saying something that differs from what the pastor said. You see the conflict and you say, enough of this, let's go to another one. You go to another one and then you end up seeing that there's a lot of great things about the community. You know, they're doing a lot of outreach. They're doing charity work and that's amazing and you support that. But again, you end up seeing something that doesn't fit your view of what Christianity is. So you end up leaving. That is what church hopping is, where you go from one church to another and to another. And I know this firsthand because my family had to deal with it when my family became Protestant Christians and we 
we ended up going through that same route. I ended up going through Baptist Church, Seventh-day Adventist, non-denominational, Pentecostal, and probably others that I don't even remember. Now again, I'm not trying to attack any particular Christian Protestant but rather Protestantism itself, because this ideology that the Protestantism movement promotes is quite dangerous. And this is essentially relativism, which is what we see now in society, where everybody claims to have their own truth. You know, my truth is this. Your truth may be something else, but my truth is this. And in my opinion, that issue that we see in society now is also tied to the actual Protestant movement itself. That will be a video for another day. So continuing this flow of the issue of who defines what, we also have the issue of authority. If it's not you, is it your pastor? If it's not your pastor, is it the organization under which your church falls into? And if there is no organization and you just participate in a small, non-denominational church, then who is it there that is able to be the authority? And I know that there are a lot of well-meaning Protestant Christians out there who want to submit to their pastors and that say, you know what, even though I don't agree, I'm going to submit because the scriptures call for us to submit to our leaders. The problem is that the leadership that God actually established, it's not some random guy who happened to have a charismatic way of approaching scriptures and of speaking to people. There is actually a set manner in which the leadership of the church is supposed to be assembled. Looking into the Catholic Church, we can see this quite clearly. Every church is under the leadership of one bishop, and your local bishop would then be under the authority of the Bishop of Rome, aka the Pope. Now, I understand why this would be triggering to a lot of people, especially people in the West, and especially if you're American. The idea of an overarching authority could be daunting, and it goes against all your values because you believe in freedom. Hashtag America. So I get it. But that does not mean that this is how Christianity works. Christianity is not a democracy. It's not a contest of who is the better preacher, which one has the best sermons. It's not about that at all. It's about following a specific structure. And as I mentioned before, in the Catholic Church, we have our bishops in submission to the Bishop of Rome, the Pope. But all of these bishops can trace back their lineage. And they go from bishop to the bishop prior all the way to the first bishops, which are the apostles of Jesus Christ himself, who then in turn have gotten their authority from Jesus Christ himself. Now, of course, I can already hear the clacking of the keyboard warriors saying that Yeshua did not establish the Catholic Church, that sure there might have been one church, but it's not the Catholic Church. But I challenge you to actually look into the history, look into what the earliest believers practice. Go into people such as Ignatius of Antioch, Clement of Rome, Saint Irenaeus. See what all those Christians believed, even from the first, second, third century, all the way forward into what we get to in the Protestant Revolution, where now somebody decided, you know what, I think there's a better flavor of Christianity. And I'm talking about Martin Luther, of course, and his new ideas, which then became what we see now in the world of Protestantism, absolute division. So if Christ's intention was unity in the church, I think you can now agree with me that there seems to be something seriously wrong with the design of Protestantism and all it has led to. Let's go back to the Catholic Church, though, where we have unity in structure, in the governmental structure, but also in the interpretation of teaching. And this comes from the fact that we do not believe that the scriptures alone are the final authority. We believe that it is God himself who is the final authority. And then he provided us with a perfect trifecta, which is is the written scriptures, which is the Bible. We also have sacred tradition, and we have the living authority of the church, which is what we know as the magisterium. If you'd like me to dive more into that in other videos, let me know in the comment section below. I'm not going to go too long in this video, but I will challenge you with this video to look at Protestantism and to be honest and tell me, does it match with Christ's desire for unity. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that even within the Catholic Church, there are not people that bicker and go back and forth. 
But that's not the issue here. We're talking about the actual church itself and its governmental structure. Because even within Catholicism, there's still room for you to think and for you to ask questions and for you to do things a little bit different. For example, within the church, we have different rights that come from different areas of the world. We have things like the Novus Ordo. We have the Latin Mass. We have things that are different, different flavors, because we embrace these differences. But when it comes to the teachings and to the authority of the church, what we actually believe in practice, when it comes to moral and theology, all of that, it goes back to Christ himself and the authorities that he has placed. So again, this is an invitation for those of you out there who are coming in from the Protestant world, if you're a new Catholic, to keep going, studying more of these things. And if you've been Catholic forever, just appreciate what an amazing thing it is to be part of the church.